This morning, Metro Airport is not only digging out, it's trying to wake up after a rather sleepless night here at the airport. Thousands of passengers have been stranded uh, because flights started being canceled around 1 p.m. yesterday. Those flights will not be getting out, some of them even this morning. Let's take you uh, around the airport and show you what it looked like at around midnight last night as passengers slept wherever they could, finding uh, places on the floor in the concourse and the terminal. Uh, the airport passed out hundreds and hundreds of blankets and pillows. What we're doing is preparing as much as we can for the morning right now. Uh, we've had our green vested customer service agents out in the terminals handing out pillows, blankets. Um, we're, we're hoping the weather clears up by the morning enough so where we can start getting some flights out. We were going to San Diego, but then uh, Tijuana for, the, for a week, a uh, week-long mission trip to build houses down in Tijuana, and uh, we got snowed out in Detroit. Um, we were told by Southwest that they, they wouldn't be able to accommodate our group until Thursday, so it actually did um, ruin the trip. Today is actually supposed to be one of the busiest travel days because of people trying to get home from the holidays. So all the passengers that you have seen laying around, playing cards, doing whatever to pass the night away, they are trying to get home or to get to other destinations. Many of them trying to get to warm, sunny places stuck here because of the snow uh, and the blizzard-like conditions here in Detroit. This morning, what you can expect at Metro Airport is going to be very, very busy with, with flights uh, booked solid. Uh, from the stranded passengers and also uh, the people that already booked their flights uh, expecting to get out of here on, on a normal Sunday. We're told that some people will not be able to get out of Detroit until Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and even into Thursday. That's because these flights are booked solid. The best information that we can give you is to call uh, the uh, various airlines and see what is happening with your specific flight. At Metro Airport, Doug Evans, Newsbeat Today. Most of Northwest Plains sit idle, blocked in by snow or grounded by mechanical problems, left behind by high winds and very cold temperatures. Inside the terminals, thousands of travelers stranded here today are slowly losing patience with Northwest. Most of them spent the night here after the snowstorm forced the cancellations of all flights. But today was intended to be a new day, and now it seems as if more flight cancellations and delays will keep most travelers here from getting off the ground. Very frustrating. I, you know, I really... I have a very 
good attitude about a lot of things. And uh, But today, I've been here since yesterday. Yesterday at 2.30. And a lot of people have been here longer than I have been. Everyone here at the airport wants to tell somebody about their horror story of a flight delay or cancellation. This woman, along with many others, got as far as the runway before being turned back. We sat for almost 10 hours, about nine and a half hours, on a runway, hearing one story after another. My daughter very nearly missed a flight because of the long security lines and, and, and two security things are not open. Now, I don't know if that's because they can't stand, but that's just no way to run a railroad. Northwest says the challenge is snow removal and staffing. We have uh, crews that are all over the system. We have people that haven't been able to get here. We have our own gate agents and our ramp personnel that haven't been able to get here. A lot of the main roads are plowed, but the subdivisions and the driveways and whatnot, people just can't get out. Northwest underestimated the number of travelers able to make it to the airport today. As a result, more than 200 Northwest flights out of Detroit are canceled, and all flights leaving Metro are delayed. The airlines is urging people from the area to go back home and wait until tomorrow to reschedule. The airline will honor all tickets with no penalties, no charges. Just call the 1-800 number and be patient. You will eventually get through. We've notified reservations. They're bringing in extra people from Livonia as well as Seattle, Tampa, Minneapolis, Baltimore uh, to try and deal with the, the load of calls. But if you can imagine, this is one of the busiest travel days of the year and we're on overload. No doubt about it, the snow made a mess out of the first day of the media preview of the Detroit Auto Show. One vice president who was supposed to be here to unveil cars snowed in in Minneapolis. Hundreds of other journalists stranded all across the country. And you're saying, all right, enough already with the snow and the cold stuff. I want to see some hot cars. Well, let's hop inside Cobo Arena and check it all out. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride that we introduce to you the 2001 Chrysler PT Cruiser. Chrysler promised concept cars and instead made its biggest splash. The PT Cruiser Sport Utility Minivan Hybrid. Believe it or not, this goes on sale this time next year. Its mother is this concept Chrysler rolled out today, the four-wheel drive Pronto Cruiser. The Jeep Commander is electric, believe it or not. It is like all of Daimler Chrysler's concepts this year, either low emission or high fuel economy. Now, the Commander is a four-wheel drive electric that makes its own electricity and uses gasoline for power. It's way out technology we probably won't see for another decade. Chrysler also rolled out its Citadel Sedan Sport Ute Hybrid, along with some familiar friends, like the Dodge Power Wagon. Forget pulling a trailer, it'll pull your house. And the Dodge Charger is back, in concept form at least. Designer Jack Crane is awfully proud. Here you got a V8 with a supercharger on it. You can light the tires up, but without any emission, emissions that you have with a regular internal combustion engine. So, I mean, it's, it's like you can cruise with no guilt. And speaking of old friends, Ford dropped its new concept Thunderbird from the Cobo Arena ceiling with a big band playing. This is almost closer to a teaser than it is a concept, and uh, a teaser being possible production vehicle. And certainly we're testing the waters here. And not to be outdone, General Motors brought out five of its concept vehicles, and they tipped their hand. Normally they would show these later on in the week, but because Chrysler and Ford did the same thing, they wanted to show us what they've got for new ideas. Now, what about these? The specifics on these vehicles? We'll tell you all about that tonight at 11. In downtown Detroit, Rod Maloney. New speed. Jackknife semis, vans stopping inches before slamming into the cold metal. Those who braved the road didn't have to take long to realize they not only needed salt and an army of plows, but they also needed nerves of steel. On the city's east side, near the city airport, the trucks line up to remove the slush and the mounting snowdrift. But at City Airport and Detroit Metro in Romulus, the wait goes on for the passengers. Most planes remain frozen on the ground. At the Pontiac Silverdome, take a look at this. Heavy snow rips through the roof, leaving a gaping hole for maintenance to repair. Even old man Winters winning the battle against our Detroit Lions.
Some planes made it out of Metro Airport today, while many, if not all, of Northwest planes remained parked. Some blocked in by snow, others grounded by mechanical problems. Yesterday's snowstorm was the beginning of a domino effect of Northwest flight delays and cancellations that left some travelers stranded for hours. Some are stranded in the airport, while others who landed here today spent up to six hours stuck in planes parked on the airfield. Bill Goldstein was one of these cooped up travelers who called the news beat to blow off some steam. There's no food, the toilets are overflowing, and we were told by one of the pilots that there are gates available uh, with some of the other airlines, but that uh, Northwest does not want to spend the money at this time to take us into any of those gates, and they don't have adequate staffing to take us into any of their gates. There are a lot of babies and small children on board, and I, people I really feel for are the kids and the parents because they're having a tough time dealing with the kids. They're starting to run out of formula and things, too. About a dozen Northwest planes sat on runways because they had no place to unload the passengers. All the jetways were occupied by other planes stuck in snowdrifts. Ground crews worked hard to free up jetways, but the weight was too much for some passengers caught in the middle. We've heard some stories about some of the other airplanes that are in similar situations where people have tried to actually uh, pop open the emergency doors and get down the chutes. So far, everybody here has been pretty calm. It's a pretty good crowd.
This is a site thousands have been waiting for all weekend. Planes flying out of Metro Airport. Now, incoming flights are much harder to come by. These folks just arrived from Florida into the aftermath of the snowstorm. When we were delayed in Tampa for about 12 hours, um, not too long on the runway itself and two hour flight. And now we've been sitting around here for a couple hours waiting to get our car. How did people handle the delay? Not very well. We shoveled a path 150 yards long. And we walked in, uh, did you get any socks on, honey? <laughs> we walked, we walked, any socks on? No socks. No? Yeah. Oh, no, with no socks on? No socks on. Oh my God, were you cold? Yes. Yeah. Northwest, the major carrier here, canceled all of its incoming flights until this afternoon. All of the airlines are scrambling now to handle a huge backload of passengers. The Oshab family of Novi was stuck in Minneapolis. They decided to rent a car and drive home. Uh, we rented a car in uh, Minneapolis and drove all night and we beat everybody out of Minneapolis. So my advice everybody back in Minneapolis or even here, rent a car, you'll get here faster than you can with the, the boarding passes. Some planes made it out of Metro Airport today, while many, if not all, of Northwest planes remained parked. Some blocked in by snow, others grounded by mechanical problems. Yesterday's snowstorm was the beginning of a domino effect of Northwest flight delays and cancellations that left some travelers stranded for hours. Some are stranded in the airport, while others who landed here today spent up to six hours stuck in planes parked on the airfield. Bill Goldstein was one of these cooped up travelers who called the news beat to blow off some steam. There's no food, the toilets are overflowing, and we were told by one of the pilots that there are gates available uh, with some of the other airlines, but that uh, Northwest does not want to spend the money at this time to take us into any of those gates, and they don't have adequate staffing to take us into any of their gates. There are a lot of babies and small children on board, and I, people I really feel for are the kids and the parents because they're having a tough time dealing with the kids. They're starting to run out of formula and things too. About a dozen Northwest planes sat on runways because they had no place to unload the passengers. All the jetways were occupied by other planes stuck in snowdrifts. Ground crews worked hard to free up jetways, but the weight was too much for some passengers caught in the middle. We've heard some stories about some of the other airplanes that are in similar situations where people have tried to actually uh, pop open the emergency doors and get down the chutes. So far, everybody here has been pretty calm. It's a pretty good crowd. Be sure to use the Northwest Airlines 1-800 number before heading out to the airport. It will save you a lot of stress and a lot of frustration once you get out here. At Detroit Metro Airport, Jason Hill, Newsbeat Today. If it could have gone wrong yesterday, it went wrong. This, not from an angry passenger, but rather the spokesperson for Northwest Airlines. The company admits absenteeism by everybody from pilots to flight crews to maintenance crippled the airline's effort to move unhappy passengers. But when the I-team pushed to find out who's at fault, Northwest Airlines says if Wayne County cleared snow from the airport, the chaos would have been minimized. That area, um, my understanding is that it is the county's responsibility and they are looking into what happened. All I can tell you is I was sitting in our tower most of Saturday and Sunday and it wasn't plowed. The allegation surprises airport director David Katz, who says his county employees deserve high praise, not criticism. The snow that wasn't moved, just impossible because of the amounts of snow, or was there more that could have been done? I don't know how you do, do more than run all of your equipment 24 hours a day for the entire duration of this event. Katz says it has an emergency plan for snow, and they followed that plan to the T. This isn't a plan that was cooked up in some closet. This is something that they're all aware of. They have copies of it, and they know how it's going to go when, when, the, when an event is coming. He also issued this challenge to compare Detroit Metro with other airports. The I-team did a comparison and found in St. Louis, eight inches of snow fell during the storm. An emergency plan implemented last Monday brought 500 employees in to work overtime. Hotel rooms and food were supplied to stranded employees, and today the airport is operating at 100%. In Chicago, 20 inches of snow fell, 200 employees were offered overtime, connections were rerouted to warm weather cities. Today, operations at O'Hare are at 100 percent.
The pillows and blankets were pulled out for another night of sleeping on the floor. Debbie Bauer and John Krober have been stuck at Metro since Saturday, trying to get to Madison, Wisconsin. We've been wandering around. We've been reading a lot. Uh, had a few beers, of course, watched some sports. They're not the only casualties of the storm. Several dogs spent more than an hour barking in the terminal. The people who were scheduled to go on their flight, they said, um, it's too cold for them in the plane, so they can't take them, they freeze. So that was pretty respectable. They left them here and they've got people in the area coming to pick them up. A mother and her baby cannot get home to Houston. She's missing work and losing needed money. Then there's a couple from Canton. They've missed their flight to China and an important appointment to adopt a baby. Hopefully we won't have to come all the way back and then go back over there again because they won't give us the appointments. What is this? This is my coat because Northwest is stupid. Passengers are fuming about the baggage situation. Suitcases are piled up everywhere and there's no order at all. They say, your bag may be out there somewhere. I said, that's simply wonderful. What are we supposed to do with that? Wayne County officials continue to dodge the cameras today, refusing to leave their offices for on-camera interviews, instead sending messengers with answers to our questions. In contrast, Northwest Airlines went very public with a full-page ad in the local paper, apologizing for the inconvenience and updating customers on progress. I think we've learned a lot from this, um, all of us, and, um, you know, you learn from your mistakes. We, we were all guilty of making mistakes. For three days, Airport Director David Katz said his team worked flawlessly and heroically. Now his staff admits the county made mistakes by not precisely following the emergency plan. Today, airlines voiced concerns to the county in its first face-to-face -face meeting since the storm, telling the county at least three changes must be made. The first, communication between the county and airlines must get better. There just needs to be more of it. The I-Team uncovered a breakdown in communications the airlines say resulted in equipment getting plowed in. A second change, clearing snow immediately from the de-icing pad. Because if you can de-ice right before you take off, it's much more efficient than de-icing at the gate. And finally, the airlines say snow was piled way too high. Changes need to be made in the future. It also becomes an issue as while well the snow is being piled, you know, how you uh, move the planes around those areas because you don't want to hit a snowbank. 